good afternoon children welcome back to our class as i had promised you yesterday we are going to have the supplementary reader footprints without feet today so there we had done chapter 3 and now chapter 4 a question of trust is waiting for us okay i don't want to explain the story detailly because there is a suspense it's a very interesting story all the stories are interesting but still this is uh, even more interesting so let us read this lesson and tomorrow i'll give you a little bit explanation and on the third day we can have the complete reading and full understanding okay and you know this one is written by this story a question of trust is written by victor canning he is a british writer a prolific writer and you know this uh, chapter is a question of trust that means there is a question mark on somebody's trust you know what is trust trust is a faith kisi par aap vishwas kar sakte hai ya nahi this is a question whether you can trust somebody properly or not can you trust ah, there are people trustworthy people are there but here there is a question the story is little bit uh, a doubtful one there's a question mark can you trust somebody especially somebody in the same profession you know same profession this a teacher teacher ko trust kar sakta hai doctor doctor ko trust kar sakta hai student student ko trust kar sakta hai means jo bhi jis kaam mein dono lage hue hain वो एक दूसरे पर भरोसा कर सकता है या नहीं इंग्लिश में कहावत है बर्ड्स ऑफ द सेम फदर फ्लॉक टुगेदर आप जब ये देखो पंछी उड़ते हुए देखते हैं ना क्या होता है एक जैसा पंछी साथ उड़ते हैं झुंड जब उड़ते हैं ना दे ऑल फ्लॉक टुगेदर एक जैसा पक्षी आता है उसमें दूसरा वाले को अलाउ नहीं बच्चे बच्चों में मिल जाता है बड़े बड़े में मिल जाते हैं बूढ़े बूढ़े में मिल जाते हैं टीचर्स टीचर्स के साथ बात कर लेते हैं अच्छा लगता है कैन यू ट्रस्ट देम दैट आई डोंट नो द स्टोरी ए क्वेश्चन ऑफ ट्रस्ट डील्स विद समबडीज ट्रस्ट ओके सो आई एम गोइंग टू रीड इट फॉर यू इट्स सेट दैट यू मस्ट सेट ए थीफ टू कैच ए थीफ बट इट इज ऑल्सो सेट दैट there is owner among thieves which is saying does this story illustrate i just want to explain you must set a thief to catch a thief chor chor ungo pakadne mein bahut mahir hota hai chor ko sare chedi medi rasta pata hota hai isliye agar police wala pehle chor hota chor tha to wo police wala चोरों को आसानी से पकड़ता क्योंकि उसको पता होता है चोर क्या क्या कर सकता है इसका मतलब सेम प्रोफेशन में एक चोर को पकड़ने के लिए दूसरी चोर को लगाना चाहिए इसका मतलब दोनों एक ही प्रोफेशन में है फिर भी बेईमानी है एक चोर दूसरी चोर को तो नहीं पकड़वाना चाहिए है ना लेकिन और एक कहावत है There is owner among thieves. चोरों को बीच में एक दूसरे के प्रति सम्मान है जहां सम्मान है वहां धोखा नहीं होता है ना तो एक जगह ऐसे कहते हैं चोर को पकड़ने के लिए चोर को लगाओ 
दूसरी जगह कहते चोरों के बीच में इतना आत्मसम्मान है इतनी सम्मान है कि एक चोर दूसरी चोर को कभी धोखा नहीं देता रजसी इनमें से कौन सी वाली को ये कहानी रोशनी डाल रहे मतलब ये कहानी में इनमें से कौन सी वाली बता रहे श्योर गोट इट लेट्स प्रोसीड एवरी वन थॉट दैट हरीस डैन बी वॉज ए गुड ऑनेस्ट सिटीजन ही वॉज अबाउट फिफ्टी ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड अन मैरिड एंड ही लिव्ड विद ए हाउस कीपर हु वरीड ओवर हिज हेल्थ इन फैक्ट ही वॉज यूजली वेरी वेल एंड हैप्पी एक्सेप्ट फॉर अ टैक्स ऑफ हेवी फीवर इन समर ही मेड लॉक्स एंड वॉज सक्सेसफुल इनफ एट हिज बिजनेस to have two helpers yes horace danby was good and respectable but uh, not completely honest 15 years ago horace had served his first and only sentence in a prison library he loved rare expensive books so he robbed a safe every year each year he planned carefully just what he would do stole enough to last for 12 months and secretly bought the books he loved through an agent now walking in the bright july sunshine he felt sure that this year's robbery was going to be as successful as all the others for two weeks he had been studying the house at shotover grange looking at its rooms its electric wiring its paths and its garden this afternoon the two servants who remained in the grange while the family was in london had gone to the movies horay saw them go and he felt happy in spite of a little tickle of hay fever in his nose he came out from behind the garden wall his tools carefully packed in a bag on his back there were about 15000 pounds worth of jewels in the grange safe if he sold them one by one he expected to get at least 5000 enough to make him happy for another year there were three very interesting books coming up for sale in the autumn now he would get the money he wanted to buy them he had seen the housekeeper hang the key to the kitchen door on a hook outside he put on a pair of gloves took the key and opened the floor opened the door he was always careful not to leave any fingerprints a small dog was lying in the kitchen it stirred made a noise and moved its tail in a friendly way all right sherry horay said as he passed all you had to do to keep dogs quiet was to call them by their right names and show them love the safe was in the drawing room behind a rather poor painting horay wondered for a moment whether he should collect pictures instead of books but they took up too much room in a small house books were better there was a great bowl of flowers on the table and horace felt his nose tickle he gave a little sneeze and then put down his bag he carefully arranged his tools he had 4 hours before the servants returned the safe was not going to be had to open After all he had lived with the locks and safes all his life the burglar alarm was poorly built he went into the hall to cut its wire he came back and sneezed loudly as the smell of the flowers came to him again how foolish people are when they own valuable things horace thought a magazine article had described this house giving a plan of all the rooms and a picture of this room the writer had even mentioned that the painting hid a safe 
but Horace found that the flowers were hindering him in his work. He buried his face in his handkerchief. Then he heard a voice say from the doorway, What is it? A cold or hay fever? Before he could think, Horace said, Hay fever, and found himself sneezing again. The voice went on, You can cure it with a special treatment. You know, if you find out just what plant gives you the disease, I think you'd better see a doctor if you are serious about your work. I heard you from the top of the house just now. It was a quiet, kindly voice, but one with firmness in it. A woman was standing in the doorway and Sherry was rubbing against her. She was young, quite pretty and was dressed in red. She walked to the fireplace and straightened the ornaments there. Down, Sherry, she said. Anyone would think I had been away for a month. She smiled at Horace and went on. However, I came back just in time, though I did not expect to meet a burglar. Horace had some hope because she seemed to be amused at meeting him. He might avoid trouble if he, if he treated her the right way. He replied, I didn't expect to meet one of the family. She nodded. I see what an inconvenience it is for you to meet me. What are you going to do? Corey said. My first thought was to run. Of course, you could do that. But I would telephone the police and tell them all about you. They would get you at once. Corey said. I would, of course, cut the telephone wires first and then. He hesitated. A smile on his face. I would make sure that you could do nothing for some time. A few hours would be enough. She looked at him seriously. You would hurt me? Horace paused and then said, I think I was trying to frighten you when I said that. You did not frighten me. Horace suggested. It would be nice if you would forget you ever saw me. Let me go. The voice was suddenly sharp. Why should I? You were going to rob me. If I let you go, you will only rob someone else. Society must be protected from men like you. Horace smiled. I am not a man who threatens a society. I steal only from those who have a lot of money. I steal for a very good reason. And I hate the thought of prison. She laughed and he begged, thinking that he had persuaded her. Look, I have no right to ask you for anything, but I am desperate. Let me go and I promise never to do this kind of thing again. I really mean it. She was silent, watching him closely. Then she said, you are really afraid of going to prison, aren't you? She came over to him, shaking his, her head. I have always liked the wrong kind of people. She picked up a silver, bo fox, silver box from the table and took a cigarette from it. Horace, eager to please her and seeing that she might help him, took off his gloves and gave her his cigarette lighter. You will let me go? He held the lighter towards her. Yes, but only if you will do something for me. Anything you say. Before we before we've let for, left for London, I promised my husband to take my jewels to our bank, but I left them here in the safe. I want to wear them to a party tonight. So I came down to get them, but... Corey smiled. You have forgotten the numbers to open the safe, haven't you? Yes, replied the young lady. Just leave it to me and you will have them within an hour. But I will have to break your safe. Don't worry about that. My husband won't be here for a month and I will have the safe mended by that time. And within an hour, 
Horace had opened the safe, given her the jewels and gone happily away. For two days he kept his promise to the kind young lady. On the morning of the third day, however, he thought of the books he wanted and he knew he would have to look for another safe. But he never got the chance to begin his plan. By noon, a policeman had arrested him for the jewel robbery at Shotover Grange. His fingerprints. For he had opened the safe without gloves, were all over the room, and no one believed him when he said that the wife of the owner of the house had asked him to open the safe for her. The wife herself, a grey-haired, sharp-tongued woman of sixty, said that the story was nonsense. Horace is now the assistant librarian in the prison. He often thinks of the charming, clever young lady who was in the same profession as he was and who tricked him. He gets very angry when anyone talks about owner among thieves. So this is the story. It's a wonderful story. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to give you the nutshell, the summary. And the next day we are going to explain, read and explain. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Take care.